All right. Hey, everyone. Welcome to another Webflow Workshop. I am your host, Nelson. Thank you for joining me this week. This is episode 141. Uh, this is another special live stream where uh, I wanted to get more of the community, give, give you, you all, you awesome people who are building awesome things on Webflow, want to give you the spotlight and show off what you're building and uh, today we have a special guest named uh, Stefan Poulos. And uh, I want to talk so much more about him and introduce him on stream. And like he's going to show us his process on how he rebuilt, how he rebuilt his portfolio site. And we all have different processes to, uh, to build our own portfolio site. I know that uh, for when I was rebuilding mine, it... It was really tough. And so getting these different um, point of views or different processes from all community members, it can help you give you some tips on how to rebuild yours better or rebuild or redo your process. So, yeah, we can all learn from this uh, this gentleman. And uh, before we bring him onto the stream, uh, if you're new to this stream, this stream happens every other Tuesday. I'm going to try to make it weekly, though. Um, at 10 a.m. Pacific time here on this YouTube channel, youtube.com slash webflow. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you'll know when we go live or when our education team puts out new videos so you can learn more about Webflow. Uh, yeah, so Stefan Poulos, uh, let me show you his current site right now. Let me get it up right here. Cool. Let me refresh that real quick and check this out. It is a very unique layout. I, you know, I, I don't really see layouts like this where it's very grid-like. And obviously, he probably used the new CSS grid feature, which is, you know, makes our lives easier. And you can make cool layouts like this. But usually, when I think of a website, I think, okay, we got the header, or we got a hero row, and then we got a secondary row that um, adds more information, and then da-da-da-da-da, and then at the very bottom, contact us. But as you scroll down, as you scroll down, check this out. The the grid is is very unique. It's It's not something I've seen before. You know, and I hope I see more more of uh, sites built like this using CSS Grid. You know, oh, that's sweet right there, the the laptop opening, and then uh, Octopus. I want to know more about the Octopus, but yeah, inside of those uh, boxes too is he has um, interactions too, uh, doing like mouse mouse over, and then the little waving hand. I mean, there's so many little things. It's it's very unique and then this little thing right here the the tennis ball how it follows my mouse i mean you don't have to do stuff like that but it's it's quite quite amazing uh to to add these little little micro interactions so all right so yeah so that's pretty cool um now a little bit more about uh, Stefan before I get him on. So he was uh, the creative director over at Discovery Channel and Science Channel. Uh, he worked on uh, brands such as D Deadliest Catch, Dirty Jobs, MythBusters, Planet Earth, and Shark Week. That's amazing. And besides that, he also was the cre executive creative director at Papa's Group, where he led uh, work for Virgin America, Sci-Fi, Geico, uh, and Spaghettios. So, I this is uh, pretty awesome to have him on the stream. So let me just get him on here. Uh, let me press. Him. Yay, Stefan! Hi. Hello, hello, hello. Hi. How are you? Good, good. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So, um, thank you again for uh, for being on this uh, on this stream because uh, when I first saw your site, I was like, this is unique, and this guy totally saw css grid on webflow and was like yes i can i can do everything now so i just want to know um you know, how did you of course we're going to get into your process and everything yeah but let's learn more about you for the people who don't know you but even your instagram bio says that you're the most famous designer that you've never that no one has heard of so why yeah what, <laughs> why what is that, that your bio yeah um, it was a bit of a joke, but I, I think, you know, of all of the designers that you've never heard of, 
I'm prob probably one of them. Um, there's a good chance that you might have seen some of my work. And so, you know, I was fortunate enough, um, you know, to have a lot of opportunity um, throughout my career. I, you know, I worked um, at Discovery starting as a young designer, and I just kind of made my way up uh, through there. And I worked on very high profile work, and it was all advertising. So, you know, conceptual advertising and mm -hmm it's seen all over the world and I'm working on really big projects with big budgets and I'm doing photo shoots with all of these, you know, the talent from discovery and, you know, as a, so as a young designer, it was, it's very, you know, it's, it was a glamorous job, but you know, it, it has its ups and downs just like any, any job, but you know, I had a, I had a really good run there. Um, as I will a, say as though, a Oh, yeah. uh, as, as a young designer, though, uh, so just thinking thinking about that, as a young designer, did it uh, intimidate you with those big budgets and and how how big the brands were that you were working with? No, because I think I was probably too naive or just too dumb to like think anything other than that. Um, but um, I think you know, looking back on it now, you know, it's I, I was definitely fortunate to like work in an environment like that you know I, I didn't see myself in a corporate role like that but um uh you know it, it was interesting and you know interestingly enough it's very different it, I feel like it was like my past life now compared to kind of what I'm doing now so oh okay yeah okay yeah and so um uh, so what I always usually, uh, what I always like to ask uh, Weblo community members whenever uh, I get to speak one on one with them is uh, three things. Uh, one, how did you find out about Webflow? Two, what was that Webflow magic aha moment? Uh, and oh yeah, and and three, like why did you, uh, you know, why did you decide, you know what, I'm gonna go all in on on Webflow? Yeah, so I've been um, I've been using Webflow for quite a while now, maybe um, gosh, four years, and um, I've seen it kind of evolve over the years. And I think so. I, you know, I don't I don't remember exactly how I stumbled upon it, but it was a, around the time. So I'm uh, you know when I went off on my own, I'm working with large companies on working on these large kit scale design systems and, yeah. you know, sketch was, you know, very popular back then still is. Um, but there wasn't a lot of design tools out there. And I think, um, my desire to take something from a static form and prototype it and test it, I just started like playing around with things and, it, and not even showing anyone. Like I would take like, um, like the Airbnb site and I would just try to build it and I would just l literally just look at it and, and figure out can I build something that looks like that and behaves exactly like that and just try to figure it out so you know I'm watching YouTube videos I'm going on the forums like asking people stuff and I, you know you know there's like a really like helpful community around uh, Webflow so you know, um, I think that was my first start in kind of figuring out what it would could what it could do, and then I started kind of bringing that into my to my workflow slowly. Yeah, and, and so what was that um, first moment when um, when you're like, "Holy crap, Webflow can can do that!" You know? Yeah. Well, I think it totally made me a better designer absolutely because i think there is a there's there sometimes you you tend well sometimes you tend to get in this trap where you're working on a static design and you're so precious with it that you just need to like you know test test it out and validate your ideas yeah and i feel like nowadays like the prototype is the new wireframe like, you know, people are, are not, I mean, there's still definitely a process where you, you, you know, work in wireframes into, into, uh, you know, a project, but, um, 
I don't know. I, I have a lot of strong opinions on all of that, but I, I feel like it's, it's, you know, definitely made me a better designer. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so you, so, um, you, to train yourself on Webflow, you, you took like may, uh, popular sites and tried to rebuild them from scratch yeah. inside of Webflow. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that, I, I feel like we connect on that because like, that's how I, that's how I do uh, some of my workshops or that's how I just, yeah. uh, what I do on my off time is like, I see a dribble shot or, um, I see like a new Apple page or something. And I'm like, can I do that? Can I do that? Exactly. And it's a, yeah. it's a great it's way a, to, it's, it's a great way to learn. Yeah. And even back, I mean, just to, just to kind of point back to discovery, I think even though I was doing, you know, I, I was, I was in, um, advertising so it's print design outdoor a lot of broadcast design um but i was always really aggressive about like learning new technologies so even back then before flash i don't know if you remember like macromedia oh, director yeah, yeah i i remember macromedia those are the days yeah. <laughs> so I, you know i was i was doing stuff like timeline animation and, and macromedia director and then um director oh man yeah <laughs> shockwave yeah, yeah. that's right um and then later when, you know i was working on the sci-fi project i i taught myself how to use cinema 4d so i could get some of the 3d stuff nice. and so I, I feel like you 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 have to be aggressive about that sort of thing um you know just because there's a lot of tools out there yeah yeah Awesome. So uh, let's go to your process in uh, your 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 rebuilding of your website. So, um, yeah. So why did you redesign your portfolio, and what was the the whole process ar around it? Sure. Um, should I? Do you mean share now, or? Yeah. Sure. Okay. Let's go cool. ahead and share your screen. Oh, and also um, for live chat, if you have a question for Stefan and uh or you have a site that you want he and i to just look over uh during the stream during the uh ending of the stream let us know uh just by filling out the form um if a mod can share the form yeah i think peter's sharing the form so yeah if you have a question or a website review please go ahead and fill that out and we'll get to it towards the end uh, but yeah so let's look at how you built your site. So I, th I thought it would be good to um, uh, um, go over uh, my original site. Um, and, um, you know, what I had before was built on WordPress. This is when I first started out. And I think it, you know, it, it served its purpose. Um, but I, I, you know, if you were to fast forward to today, I, I quickly outgrew, outgrew kind of what I was showing here. And mm -hmm. it was it was out of sync with what I was building for clients. So, um, you know, it was a traditional site with a, you know, a homepage and, and I had to do a lot to kind of make it my own. And I had yeah. these long case studies. And so when I, I set out sort of as a goal, you know, a, a couple of things, which was, um, and I was really, I think, challenging what I think the, maybe the modern portfolio could be. Not that I'm holding my, my site there, but um, I questioned whether or not I needed long case studies because I found that what really happens is that people wanna know about you and who, what is your background and um, a lot of times, you know, when you go and talk with a potential client, this is the kind of stuff that you go and talk with them like in person and like, like, you know, go through it in detail. And so I really was at, at the very beginning challenging the idea that I need a long case studies like this. The second thing was um, just one note about that. I love I love that you were thinking about that during your um, uh, redesign because uh, something that I always uh, say and I always champion for portfolio sites is tell your story first. Yeah. 
Yeah. Because that is the first handshake uh, with with someone. You know, uh, when they come to your site, you're you're giving a virtual handshake. When you're giving a virtual handshake, you're not just saying, "Oh, here's my work." You know, and and, and there's like, "Okay, nice work," but like, who are you? And how, yeah. why should I trust you with my brands and yeah. projects? But totally. yeah, I'm, I'm totally glad you're you're speaking about that. So sorry, go ahead. No, no, that's fine. Um, so um, I this is typically, um, I mean, this is the way I, I worked on my current website, but um, typically I like to, this is a real-time board and, you know, they changed it to Miro recently, but cool. I think it's always good to have like a, like surround yourself with a digital war room of sorts so that you can totally immerse yourself in what you're doing and constantly add to it and constantly refer to it. And so something like this allowed me to kind of not even like start designing, but to collect my thoughts. And so like, for example, like this, this is a, a you know, a much more um, detailed version of that of how I typically work but this is this is another project I can't really like zoom into any of this stuff but I think you get the idea that if you just start collecting things and kind of immersing yourself in this um, I, I you know I'm a visual person so that's just typically how I like to work that is a crazy board man <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I like it though. Uh, it totally yeah. makes sense. You you need to see all the different options to figure out which one works for you. Yeah. So the next thing I did was um, I started this. This is literally how I started. Um, I was I wasn't really even thinking about design. I was thinking about structure and kind of how I wanted to do this. So I just started almost block framing different ideas, like having like. Instagram story type things that maybe scroll through the page or like expanding panels. And I eventually landed here and then I just started making different grids. So and, between uh, those two very different styles, I feel like the the one on the left is mm -hmm. is very traditional. And I yeah. feel like there is a moment in between the left and the right um, layouts where you're like, wait, I want to yeah. use grid. Yeah. Like, what well, you, was you know that? What it was? You know what, what it, was it? it was? Think about the, the concept that if you, if my, your, my, my target audience is, busy, you know, potential clients, they're busy executives and they have, you know, not a lot of time like us designers do to like pour through these, these sites and kind of geek out on the design. Yeah. If, if you had a, like a one page mood board for yourself, like how would you present yourself? Oh, nice. So that's, that's what, that's what this was. It's just the mood board of, Hey, this is me. This is my work and nice to meet you. Beautiful. Yeah. So it's a highly interactive mood board, but that's that's effectively like what it is. Yeah. So um, these were like different elevation studies, and wow. so this was my this was my original design, and and I'm I, I didn't I left it like this. I didn't change anything, and and to be quite honest with you, I I was I struggled with this for for a while. I, I just, I would do something, I, I, I just hated it. And I would get frustrated and I would just walk away. Yeah. And um, I mean, we are our own worst uh, critics. Yeah. Of, you know, when it comes to our own work. And that's why I think uh, portfolio sites are such a hard thing to do. And I bet you even hate or like just kind of dislike your final project, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm my own worst critic for sure. Yeah. So I think what, what struck me with this design is that, um, and what was interesting too, is that when you think structurally like this and, and, and you're kind of, you're designing into this structure. And so what I found was that I really needed to kind of change the way I thought about how I presented work. And, you know, I eventually, you know, got here as what you see today. But yeah, I think 
one of those things was that um, I went into Webflow and figured out that I could, you know, if I put in like carousels into some of these squares, then I didn't have to put so much information out there in the forefront, which cleaned it up uh, considerably. Yeah. So. Wow. Yeah. That, so that's an amazing uh, process and an amazing concept and story. Um, yeah, I didn't think about that. Uh, think about your site as a as a personal mood board. Mm -hmm. But now that you said it, it's like it, it like pff, blew my mind. Yeah, because yeah. that's basically what a portfolio site is. It's uh, it's who are you? What do you do? What do you like? Um, you know, and are you a trustworthy person? So, That's right. And I, I think, you know, um, if, if you look back here, um, I think that's, that's what it was missing. You know, it, it was missing, you know, my, you know, as I said, I, I bring a lot of kind of varied experience to the work that I do. Yeah. And, you know, maybe it shows in the work, but it, it, it doesn't really, I, I think to get across your personality and your background is just really hard to do in, you know, in a portfolio site like this. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, just want to remind live chat that if you have any questions for Stefan, 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 <laughs> Stefan. Okay. I think I said it wrong. Okay. So right. if you have any questions for Stefan, please, um, uh, fill out that form that Peter is linking in the live chat. And, or if you want him to uh, review the project or website that you're working on right now, yeah, put that in the forum as well. Uh, we'd love to check it out. But um, yeah, that, that is amazing. Cool. Thank you for showing, thank you. thank you for showing that process. And um, yeah, this, for me personally, like what I'm trying to do is redesign my portfolio, portfolio site uh, starting at the end of every um, third quarter. Oh, just nice. to, just to you know, keep it fresh, and, yeah. and do something and and push myself. And so I'm totally gonna take some of these tips, like surround myself in some sort of like digital creative war room, and yeah. just um, make um, artboard after artboard until it makes sense. And the last one is that that personal mood board. Obviously, I'm not gonna use your uh, layout because that's so unique and I, I don't want to do that. But the, the, uh, the concept of a personal mood board is really what I'm going to take away from this stream. So thank you so much for showing yeah, us this sure. process. Of course. But last thing I want to ask you though, is what's with the octopus and can you show us that 3d print of one or that toy behind you? <laughs> um, wait, hold on. That that back there? Yeah. yeah. Um, so, I, you know, it's a good question. So I, I started bef before, uh, I, I went off on my own about four, four and a half years ago. Um, and prior to that, I think I can go back and look through my sketchbooks. For some reason I was drawing octopus, like just, just different random octopus. Yeah. And um, it came time to like, you know, I, I was, you know, um, starting a new company and a new consultancy, rebranding myself, reinventing myself. And I just thought there was a lot of symbolism with the octopus that, you know, they're highly intelligent. There's a lot of meaning behind them. And, um, you know, I just, I, I, I didn't want anything traditional. I didn't want anything necessarily with my name really big or anything. Um, it just sort of fit my personality, I guess. Nice. Yeah. I, I can see oh, I that. Like my initials in there. Excuse me? I, I hid my initials in the octopus legs. You can see the SP. Oh, <laughs> nice. Very <laughs> cool Easter egg. I like it. Have you ever dressed as Doc Ock? <laughs> no, no, no. Maybe you should do that for Halloween. <laughs> it would be totally on brand. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah um so yeah let's uh, we have uh, going to the questions uh we got one question and three websites um yeah let's 
let's just get into it. Um, we'll we'll take the question first. So, from Wadud, it, um, let's see here. What are some uh, some best practices you follow when starting a new Webflow project? For example, creating a page to serve as a style guide, declaring fonts globally on all the body class, all the H1 tags, etc. Can you walk us through the process? Ah, good question. Jimmy, go for that one? Yeah. Okay. And then you can, I'm sure you can uh, speak to this more than I can. Um, I, um, I think that you, usually I, I have this on all of my projects where I, you know, I set the oh. typography and, and colors and things. And um, let's see if I go over to Webflow. Um, I have, it, it's a kind of a very basic version of that where mm -hmm. I would just go in and kind of set the typography and everything. Um, but uh, that's, you know, you know, typically how, how I would start, um, you know, in, in setting up, uh, you know, a project like this. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, Webflow, if you search, there has, I, I think Ryan and I think Waldo as well, uh, has a clonable style guide project that, uh, you can clone into your Webflow uh, account for free and uh start from there you know uh, that's where you can go ahead and start styling your typography your buttons your your swatches um yeah that's uh where uh you would normally start you know um you, you want to make sure that everything looks cohesive before going into making your design yeah uh, but, for sure yeah. okay we got a couple more questions uh one from Lindsay. Uh, okay, this one's for you. Have you do you always use Sketch first, or have you ever jumped into a Webflow project without using Sketch or something static first? Uh, I do it all the time. Um, so I uh, a lot of times I might I, I might have a, like a literal pencil sketch of of something that I'm thinking about, and I'll just jump right into Webflow and like kind of test it out and. I'm really not testing, I'm not like validating design, but I'm kind of validating, um, you know, a behavior or like an interaction that I'm thinking about. That's usually when I kind of jump into um, to Webflow. In fact, um, this is, um, when I was designing the site, this is about the most that I designed before and then I went right into Webflow. I did not mm. design the whole page. Oh, so, so you you kind of got the gist of it after after that, and you're like, okay, let me try it in Webflow. Let me see if it makes sense. And then after it did make sense, you just finished it up. That's right. So yeah. like this isn't it. This is basically a di diagram of like what's happening. And I think what's really interesting about the CSS grid. Um, with with Webflow is that, and again, you know, you, you know, we're if you're you know you're you're challenging what a website can be, right? You're challenging the traditional like, you know, there's a top header and then there's stuff below it and then stuff below that, right? Yeah. And I think something like this kind of illustrates the types of things that you can do with CSS grid and kind of really think about each screen size as, you know, as its own design. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I'm definitely going to clip that. So I'm going to wave hi to myself to, <laughs> to, Hey, clip this one. Um, yeah. So next question, uh, let's see here. Uh, why dude, I think we've already answered that. He's asking, can you explain your process? from design platform, Figma, Sketch, et cetera, to Webflow. I mean, uh, do you, I think you've already spoke about that. You'd use real time board or Miro, but now that mm -hmm. it's called, and then, um, you use sketch, then yep. style guide and Webflow, then, uh, creating the whole site inside of Webflow. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's get into the site reviews. And also if you still have a question, yeah. Uh, let us know. Um, how should, Oh, how should I send you this? Let me see here. 
Okay. Okay, cool. Have the chat room open for for Zoom. Um let's see here. This is from AJ, Heart Barbecue. Alright, I'm gonna open it up. Let's see here. How am I gonna open this up? Um actually do you wanna just open it up on your screen and share your screen? Uh sure. Okay, and then like we can go through it together. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, okay. What? <laughs> Sorry. How did Google hear me? <laughs> Anyways, okay. Uh, so this is Heart Attacks Barbecue. I'm guessing <laughs> it's for a client site. Heart attacks. Ooh, that's. I guess that's tongue in cheek or, uh, yeah, tongue in cheek type of, yeah. So, um, <laughs> I'll I'll give my thoughts at first, and then um, I'll hand it over to you. Is that cool? Sure. Yeah. So, uh, first of all, um, I feel like uh, the gradients at the top nav, uh, make the site look dated, um. And so, and I don't know if that's the uh, actual logo of the company. If it if it is, uh, maybe take out the um, the circle to make it like a transparent. Oh, there's um, there's a couple of things that I would I would do. I'd make it more make it more flat because the logo is flat uh, rather than the gradient. And then I would um, yeah. There's a I think you would start from a style guide first. I think this is where this needs to start. Like, let's take a step back. Yeah. Um, I feel like this was built immediately on Webflow before starting with a wireframe and some sort of mood board or style guide. Um, and that's where I would start with first. It looks like you have great, uh, um, you have a lot of food photography, especially with the, the pineapples and the, and the, the ribs. I mean, like, food photography is always great but um i feel like the the type hierarchy and then the ui elements are taking away from the great photography especially when the the images are stretched in a way that they're not in the ratio so yeah i would really take a step back before um before going live with this uh so that's just my that's my quick thoughts yeah I, I agree i think it's just uh you know i think what this it it, it feels like um maybe it 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 just didn't have a plan um and it there's it, it's almost like um you know and it's fine to kind of jump on to webflow and like experiment with different things like this um but uh, like Nelson said, I, I think it would be good now to say, you know, all right, step back, um, look at it from a kind of a, a more holistic perspective and, and kind of think about what you want to kind of accomplish here. There's a lot of stuff that's just hard to read, you know? Yeah, yeah. You, you never want to make the user, like, confused on where to click and um, too much information going at them at the same time. Yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah. Take a step back. Um, and if you're, if you're not a designer by trade, you know, um, uh, like Erica said in the live chat room, if you can find a designer to help you out, that would, that would be awesome. Or if you're learning design now, dude, awesome. Keep at it. Don't, don't stop. Don't let, um, don't let, uh, you know, any, anyone say that, oh, this is not a good site. We all start somewhere you know For so sure. keep go keep going at it my first site uh was was crap i mean i had like uh animated gifs of running dogs and whatnot and it didn't make any sense but i mean it, you know we all gotta start somewhere so keep going yeah. and yep. come back next week and the week after and just show us how you're progressing all right yeah. um next one is from Lindsay hwl creatives dot com i'm gonna pull it up on my side right here you can pull it pull it up on yours um we whoa whoa there's a lot of words okay hold on i gotta refresh there's a lot of things happening we are 
Words, 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 words. HWL creative. Okay. All right. Impactful. I like the the hero row is is neat. All right. We have gradients, interactions, very spaced out stuff. Okay. I I like when people are using like grid lines. Mm -hmm. Like yes. Yeah. The, the, that's like a new style. Um, I see that uh, rollovers under the services have um, they're tilting a little. Yeah. I like to know why. Uh, I guess it's kind of fun, um, but I don't know. Huh. I don't know if tilting is is the the thing to do there. But again, this is all subjective. I think uh, what's probably most interesting about this section in particular is the shape. And oh, yeah. the, um, the, I think the, the tilting almost takes away from it. I, I would want to see, I think you could lose the uh, fingers pointing and maybe do something to highlight the shape a little bit more. Maybe it like, you know, it's a more drastic change when you kind of hover over these. Yeah. This is the, I mean, it, it starts um, pretty impressively, you know, and it, it gets your attention. Um, and there's a lot of nice color here, um, but I, I think there's some things that you could do to just enhance it, enhance the design and, and think about, you know, you know, the act, the interactions should should have a purpose as much as possible. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I was going to tell you to open up the nav and, ooh, CSS grid. I love it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. This is a huge uh, menu, and I'm, to, to me, I'm all about it. I like it. It's, it's different, and to me, it works. Uh, what do you think? I really like it. I, I love things like this, um, you know, and I, I like, um, I like that the whole, like this whole zone is clickable and it's, you know, it's very subtle. It's, you know, it's just very easy to kind of comprehend. I, w I wanted to see what this looked like on, uh, yeah. See, thanks for, uh, showing your website. All right. Let's see here. Toro Entertainment by Raymar. Oh, you already got the link. Cool. It spins. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> that's so cool. Oh, as you scroll. Okay, there you go. As you scroll down, the needle goes on the record. Okay, that's neat. All right, so we're scrolling down. Artist development and talent management. Oh, it turns into a gold record. Oh, yeah. We, we help make gold records. And then it turns silver. <laughs> oh, platinum. Sorry. And then platinum. That I, I understand that. That's cool. And then we go into like a background video of water droplets or ink dropping into... Oh, no, no. It's a speaker. Yeah, it's a speaker with water on top of it or something. Oh, okay. Okay. So this is a very storytelling homepage. Yeah. Um, I think this is another good example where... Um, it's a really unusual and interesting interaction that you probably would not expect to happen. Yeah. And um, it, it feels like almost um, like I'd want it to be smaller or there's, it, there, there's something about it that it, it, like the way that it's overtaking the page is a little too much because you're not really giving me any information on here. So maybe it could be yeah. smaller or something, but um, it's definitely interesting. Yeah, yeah it, I agree. It, it, it does, you know, have that wow factor of like, whoa, what is this? And yeah. it brings you down. But um, if you don't, so I don't know what Torah Entertainment is. And so maybe your mission or something. So your mission says artist development. And, oh no, that's what you do. Artist development intelligence management um do you have some sort of mission statement or something okay 
Whether you're an upcoming, up and coming artist or an experienced pro, we're here to help you take the next step in your music career. So I think that highlighted part, take the next step in your music career, could be mm -hmm. something in the hero role. So people are like Toro Entertainment. Um, what do they do? Are they like, are yeah. they DJs or pr uh, production company? Like what? What do they do? And so, take the next step in your music career kind of gives you, it kind of leads you into the first page of the book to to want to turn to the next page, you know, and which is turning the next page is scrolling down. So maybe that copy could be somewhere at the top in a smaller record or something. But yeah, yeah, but pretty cool. I like it when people are doing crazy things with interactions. You know, it just shows it just shows the flexibility of, of Webflow and um, experimentation, you know? Yeah, for uh, sure. All right, we're going to take... Uh, okay, so we have five links. So these are the la five last links. So let's go uh, from Mar Mauricio. Uh, con I can't, I can't say the name of it. Con consentia consciousness i think or okay so what is this the multi yeah. so portuguese so it seems like it's in portuguese okay i'm gonna scroll oh it's a horizontal scroll so honest uh honest opinion uh what how do you feel about a horizontal scrolls as you scroll down Uh, you know, when, um, when, uh, Apple recently did it with the iPad, um, I, I didn't mind it. I really liked it. Yeah. I think for this to work though, you really have to, um, design, you, you really have to design it with that in mind. Like I would, I would. I would have loved um, like to have some something, some indication that this is like your expect an unusual interaction, you know, when yeah. you scroll. You know, probably like and an just, arrow or something that says uh, move forward or or, or something. Yeah. For example, like uh, Netflix, and you know, there's uh, you know each row has. Um, multiple movies or TV shows because that yeah. last uh, box art or um, poster or whatever, that image of the TV show uh, is kind of cut off on on the right side, right? Exactly, right. And, and so with uh, this certain site, there's nothing cut off. So I'm thinking when I scroll down, it's going to scroll down. But when I scroll down, it's actually scrolling to the right. So there has to be something cut off or some sort of uh, visual indicator saying, hey, you're about to scroll to the right. And I think a, another good example is, have you seen the launch page for uh, Webflow Interactions too? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so um, when when Ryan um, designed the, the the history, he would have like a bunch of, uh, old browser windows overlapping each other right and they were going off to the right and so it wasn't that jarring of a user experience because when you scroll down and everything starts moving towards the left it's like oh okay because i visually saw that something was cut off and i'm naturally being led to the right so yeah yeah and i think maybe it makes it, it, it does make a little sense here because uh, you know, it's an event and you tend to read a calendar like this from left to right, like, if, you know, Monday, mm. Tuesday, Wednesday. Yeah. And so um, that I think it, it has a, you know, has a nice thing going. I would, I would, I think I would move whatever the logo and, and anything below here up to the top. And I would really highlight this timeline down here because that it's another like cool aspect of this site that kind of gets lost maybe um the bars the black bars that go from each chapter uh, i would say yeah. or e each event could be the color of gold or something since you're already using gold in the the first page yeah. there you go yeah the, so it pops out more but, yep. yeah great job all right uh next one i think this is modeler shop or this is by Wait, Johnny? Is this like Johnny at Webflow, or I guess this is? Let's see here. 
MDLR store. Oh, okay. This is a Webflow e-commerce. Uh, this is nice. It's very, very modern. Oh, I like the rollovers. And you were talking about that elevation uh, study or, or something like that on your own site. Yep. Yeah, this is nice. It's very clean. Let's see here. Yeah, I, I clicked on the, the socks and yeah, this is, I, I got, I got nothing on this. I, I, man, it, it makes sense. You know, you want to focus on the fashion yep. and, and that's it. Yeah. And I, I think the, uh, you know, the, the typography choice seems to go well with the style of clothing. You know, it just, it just feels like it's, you know, it all works together somehow. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Well, great job, Johnny. I mean, <laughs> I got nothing. All right. Last three. Uh, this is from Juan. What's this called? QR's. Um, okay. Okay. So this is in what language? Okay. Spanish. Uh, I like the hero row. Um, let's see here. Yeah. Okay. You have uh, interactions coming in. Fixed backgrounds. Uh, the phone number coming in, in my opinion, uh, didn't need to have that zoom out effect. It was very like, it felt like it felt too different from all the other interactions that you had. Like, yeah, right there. Yeah, I agree with yeah. that. But either than that, um, I like it. What I like especially is the photography in the long vertical rectangular box. Mm -hmm. And how it's coming out. I mean, thinking outside of the box. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, yeah, what are your thoughts on this? I like it. There's a lot of nice aspects of this. I would just, um, you know, anytime you have to be careful with interactions like this, I think I would just make the whole box clickable um, rather than just the arrow. Um, Good point. I didn't, I didn't go through the rest of the site, but um, same same with on the uh, on the homepage. You know, you have these like orange boxes that that come through here. I, I wonder if there, you know, maybe some more attention paid to kind of um, this this interaction and and because it feels you know it's such a large kind of space here and it feels like you're going into a section but the this feels a little it needs to be more substantial in, in some way hmm. but um there's a lot of nice uh, you know um things going on with this site hmm. cool good job yeah. and uh last one from alex dynamo let's see here Dynamo, fetching assets. Oops, sorry. Um, no, that's you. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Let me refresh. Spawning awesomeness. <laughs> Reticulating splines. I can't wait. <laughs> Machine powered growth. Oh, okay. All right. Press and hold. This is a. It's, that's a sim. That's an interesting interaction that you're telling someone press and hold. I wonder what's going to happen. I'm going to press and hold and uh, I nothing happened. I, I press and hold and then the circle. Hmm, maybe it's unfinished or something. Um, maybe something was supposed to happen. Oh, you can press and hold on the whole thing. Interesting. Not sure what's supposed to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah, it's total. Uh, it's definitely work in progress because the logos are repeating and. Yeah, this is nice. 
I, I always like when I think like a good, this is a good example where you can see when this loads and this, you know, you can, you can get inspiration from like broadcast design on this a lot of times, but yeah. you see how it, you're, you're already introduced to this uh, vertical, like wiping, you know, where the color kind of comes up from the bottom. And yeah. when you see it repeated on the button, it starts to tell you like this, you know, there's like a complete thought around the design, you know? So like the, the interactions are informing the design in some way, which I think is nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's see here. Oh, yeah, it's pretty long. Um, it's interesting that the, I don't know if you noticed the side menu like locks in the place as you scroll. Oh yeah, have you have you played with uh CS uh, the sticky position yet? Yeah. It's yeah. it's such a time saver. I think that's what um Alex is doing. Yeah. Pretty cool. I just haven't seen it done that way. Uh, I, I Ryan the only, and Jay the only part of that is that if you wanted to you can only you have to scroll to see them all, you know. Mm. So, so you kind of like, want to have that table of contents uh, always showing to see. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense because like you're like, how many rows or how many sections do I have to go through? And you'll yeah. never know. Whereas um, whereas showing them all, you're like, probably um, show them all, Alex. And then like the one that you're currently on, the current state could be like that blue. And then if they're not current, you can have them like kind of a gray or a light blue or something like that. So you can highlight the one you're on rather than yeah. doing this sticky thing, which is pretty cool. But yeah. um, UX wise, it, you kind of the user is kind of lost. But yeah, all right, that's about it. Um, thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Awesome to have really you on the. Yeah, yeah. I learned a lot. I I learned a lot, and it's awesome that you you came on here to show us your process and uh, help some community members out. Uh, if you ever have something new to show off, I would love it for you to come to show us how you did it on the stream cool. if you're allowed I to, because I know you're working on a lot of big brands on Webflow, and it's just amazing that you trust Webflow so much to prototype or even build big brand uh, things on Webflow. I do, I absolutely do. I think there's the, you know, the, the state of design tools right now is, it, I, I like to use the analogy that it's like a, I don't know if you've seen those like internet images where it's got, it's like this ridiculous looking thing where it's like, part bicycle and the like the front of the the uh, tire is off and it's like a lawnmower and you know it's like all of these like bolt-on kind of things I feel like that's the state of design tools right now where it started off with one idea but then there's so many different things that have been bolted onto it and it's like you kind of like well Frankenstein yeah yeah you might as well just had a riding lawnmower you know and it, and, and I that I think that's where, um, you know, I, I think Webflow kind of sets itself apart is because you're, you know, it's one thing to like simulate an animation and do some like fancy little prototyping, but like challenge yourself, like get on the browser and like build it and test it. And, and it, it goes a long way, you know? So um, anyway. Yeah. Yeah, it makes sense. Makes sense because you want to see it actually work for real, not just something made in After Effects or something that's not really going to be on the web. That's right. Make it real. Make it in yeah. Webflow. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much. And uh, we'll see you around on the forums. Cool. Thank you. All right. See you. Uh,
there. Let's go here. Yeah. Oh, awesome. So that was fun. Uh, shoot. Wait. <laughs> no, we're, we're, we're still on the air. I'm doing my outro. <laughs> it's okay. They can't hear you. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah. So that was Stefan. If you want to learn more about him, go to, uh, where is it? Uh, P O U L O S dot C O. Check out his website. It's super awesome. Play around with the responsiveness. It's so fluid. It's very interactive. And again, it's a personal mood board. That's a great concept to, to think about if you're going to redesign or if you're currently working on your, um, design of your portfolio site. Uh, yeah. Yeah, this was really fun. So if you want to be featured in an upcoming uh, community spotlight, yeah, just hit me up on Twitter uh, at the Pixel Geek. Uh, DM me, and I want to learn more about you. I want to give you guys a spotlight and show off what you're working on, and if you have any good tips for the community, because uh, we help, we all help each other out. Uh, let's go through our usual uh, outro. Ready? Uh, this stream, if you're not familiar with it, happens every other Tuesday at 10 a.m. Pacific time next week. Be here though. Next week, be here. We're doing our quarterly live Q and a with Vlad, our CEO. So if you have any questions about the history, the current state of Webflow or the future of Webflow, bring your questions to him. You will get the chance to talk directly to the man Vlad. All right. So come back next week. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. It's youtube.com slash webflow. Uh, on Twitter, it's webflow. Uh, Instagram is webflow, webflow app, facebook.com slash webflow. You can follow me at the pixel geek and, oh man, what was Stefan's, uh, well just search for Stefan on, uh, Twitter. I'll, I'll put him on my Twitter stream and stuff, but yeah, follow him as well. He has some good stuff. Uh, what else? Yeah. If, if you have a account billing or technical question, go to university.webflow.com slash contact. If you have a design or custom code question, go to the forums for that. Ask your question there and the global Webflow community will help you out as soon as they can. And if you get your question answered, please do me a favor and pass and answer someone else's question so you can so we can all grow together all right uh am i missing anything oh man why am i okay yeah so that's about it i will see you guys next week with vlad and as always thank you for watching and make the web beautiful see ya <laughs>